was positive for nitrates. Which could ultimately kill him. Dang if you do, dang if you don't sort of situation. All right guys, so what we're doing is, um, you guys know I borrow lots of stuff. We're at Richard's place and um, barn his uh, six to seven bill hauler. Um, and this is awesome and we can get that hay knocked out real quick with the skid steer and using this, we only maybe have a mile to travel from the hay field all the way back around on the main road and to dump them off at the Ponderosa at the front. So uh, with this, we can get six to seven big bales, probably seven bales on it, and it's really easy to use. I'll show you that here in a little bit. But uh, thank you, Richard. He always lets me borrow stuff, and this saves a whole lot of time than using a flatbed trailer or something like that. So instead of several loads, we can get like four loads today, and we all we have is 27 bales of hay. And so uh, that's what we're here to get. Let's get this bad boy. Thank you, Richard. Okay. All right. We gotta have hay, hay spikes, hay forks, whatever you call them. Skid steer's ready. Trailer's ready. Start hauling some hay. Let's do it. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Got some exciting news and some revealing news. Uh, I've been learning a lot here recently about losing my yearling. Uh, most of you may know, and if you don't, um, if you follow me the past couple of videos, we did lose a yearling, unfortunately. I'm here to tell you more about that. All right, guys, so today, one thing we're doing, Cole is out here with me, and one of the things that we're doing, as you can see here, we are hauling hay. So that is one of the good things that, that we're doing. Uh, we got 27 bales cut right here on our own property. I love that. That's so nice that we at least have more hay to stock up for winter. And as you already know, I've been using hay already because we are in a historic drought in Murray County. And um, just talking to the NRCS and the USDA and the uh, OSU Extension Office here at Murray County, we're one out of the five counties, and there are 77 counties in the state of Oklahoma. We're one of the five counties that have, uh, are in a very, very severe historical drought. And as you know, you've been following the past couple of weeks what's been going on. And uh, you can see it all right here. It's very, very dry here. And um, we obviously got some hay cut, but you can look here and see how dead this is. You can go to other parts of Oklahoma, and there's actually some green um but here we've been struggling with the drought and so speaking of the drought some things i've been learning talking to those people and i, I just want to give a shout out to them uh, at the murray county extension office uh, of course they do a lot of stuff with oklahoma state my alma mater because they do a lot of agriculture research and whatnot but uh, they've been very helpful with me so what i did was i want to show you today is we took some johnson grass samples which is one of the plants that i brought up that possibly may have um, taken down our yearling heifer. With no drought, we've had no new growth. But we did have a fire back in, um, I wanna say February, March, I'd have to go back and look. And, and that creates regro regrowth in that certain area and that's where the bison like to graze. But Johnson grass is one of those type of grasses that is very toxic. 
and I want to talk to you about that because what I've been learning here recently after losing this yearling heifer is nitrates and something called prusic acid and so here's another positive thing because it's been a little down here lately um, when you lose an animal uh, that you love and care about so much another positive is rain is on the way All right guys, now we've got our first load here. We gotta haul it up to the Ponderosa. We're gonna dump it there and then we're gonna come right back over here. And then whenever we uh, drop some hay off, or we kind of wrap this up, I'm gonna take you out to the pasture. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about, about some of this um, new growth with Johnson grass actually in the pasture because I'm in a predicament. Um, if you guys don't know, when we get this rain that we're supposed to get, uh, there's a problem with that. It brings all the good things because we're so dry here. We need the rain bad, but that also is going to cause a problem. And so I'm kind of in a tough situation as far as rotating pastures because I'll talk to you about it. We're going to go out to the pasture after we jump this off. Elsa. Good. There we go. Hot drone. A little bit. guys i know i don't talk about this place very often but we are in our hay pasture it's roughly about 38 acres and um, I, I know i haven't brought you back here that much but there's still a lot of this place to explore that you guys haven't seen and i actually haven't spent much time on 
you guys know part of project 189 been doing a lot of fence work and so we're slowly transitioning from the very front of the property to the very back and um so we got a cut last year and we got a cut this year uh luckily we will not get another one because of the lack of rain so this is just uh, more hay for us to stock up for winter and um this is actually one of my favorite places on this property and uh over here on the hill you can see the arbuckle mountains and it's it's the highest point on this property and you can see quite a bit so i'm excited in the future to show you guys more of this place as we sort of migrate back here but the idea is to still possibly cut hay off of this field in the future and maybe get that one cut and then eventually let the bison on it and uh, i can't wait to see them up there roaming around you know the sun sets back there They're just going to be very picturesque and i can't wait to uh, for us as a family to enjoy that seeing them out here plus this field because it has been cut for hay two years in a row it is a very clean pasture there's a lot of native grasses out here and so this will be untouched for over another year now and uh, hopefully get some rain speaking of rain getting the rain we are very excited about but there is something that the rain uh, is going to bring with the johnson grass it's going to bring a problem uh, that is going to put us in a tough situation so we'll chat about that later all right guys one of the reasons i'm trying to get this hay out here was just bailed i don't know five days ago i'm trying to get this hay hauled over oh back over to the uh or over to the ponderosa barn and i'm trying to get it out of here because the rain is supposed to be here and it's supposed to be supposed to get quite a bit of rain fingers crossed i won't believe it until we see it so last five right here we're gonna dump off only took four loads when you have a nice hauler like this and cole's uh he's out there wandering around the pasture but i appreciate his help having somebody uh drive the truck for you around the pasture when they're pretty spread out um, because they didn't make a lot of bills um it's very handy so thank cole for helping me today drive around this and Help me scoop up some of these big old boys. These are big bales of hay. We're talking probably a thousand pounds, so it's a uh, heavy to haul. What's up, Bill? Work the way I wanted it to. Never works the way I wanted to. Need to throw it out of the bucket. What was that? Ah, ah. All right, guys, we are out here in um, pasture, what I call three and four. We'll eventually cross divide it to make pastures three and four. 
So we're just directly west of pastures one and two where I have the big Joe herd in pasture one. I've got the yearlings in pasture two. So the fence is right over here is what I've been working on is right back here. And then um, this is a perfect example. I, I burnt this brush pile right here behind us. Oh, maybe in April, May, uh, I burnt this brush pile. And then what happened is <laughs> I left my nephew in charge and it got a little out of hand. So you can see this sort of circle loop right here. What happened was uh, it burnt, which was fine, whatever. And uh, we had a little bit of rain in May, so we've had some regrowth. And here's the regrowth I wanna show you and talk to you about. And because these burned areas are important uh, when it comes to the Prusik acid and the nitrates that are in the Johnson grass. So uh, here's the, the downfall of, of what's going on. So um, this is a perfect example. Right here is a perfect example. This is Johnson grass. This has not been here um, for over a year. The rest of this pasture um, has over a year, I don't know, maybe 15 months of, of no animals on this. So that's a lot of recovery time. But because this little patch was burnt, we have regrowth. Now, there is some really good stuff in here. So we've got lots of blue stem. You can see that sort of blue color. Here's a Here's a little blue stem, I believe is what this is. Uh, I noticed some Indian grasses popping up. There's some uh, big blue stem coming up, which is great, a part of burning. But then here is a patch of stuff that we don't want. Young growth of Johnson grass right here. And this is what we're worried about. So obviously in this burnt area is, is something that I'm concentrated on before I let Big Joe and them out here. I'm going to have to get rid of these. Now I'm going to have to either just dig them up, um, cut them down, whatever it is. I can't let them get a hold of this fresh growth because what I've been learning, and I'm no expert at this, I'm learning all this in like a week after we lost the yearling heifer. Um, what I've learned from the extension office and talking to other people is from here to here, uh, they can test for nitrates. Like on this, let me take an example here of this big one. So I, I sent some samples in and they did a uh, nitrate test for me so from here to here is about where uh, you can test for those nitrates now I don't know how to test for it I've got a video right here of a gentleman his name's John uh, he did some testing for me and there's a uh, I pulled Johnson grass in two to three different places and um, one of them was positive for nitrates But right here is where the nitrates can fall um, in this re uh, this new uh, patch burn place, post burn place where the regrowth occurred. And then there's prusic acid. And my understanding of prusic acid, especially after a rain, because this plant, Johnson grass, is in a drought, it's been stressed. When it does rain, and you have this regrowth of this plant that still can grow up to be a big plant, the prusic acid. Uh, is uh, right below um, the baseline here uh, which is in your root system and it will actually come up into the plant and when they start to nip on this it's where the prusic acid if they have too much of it it can kill them now that is my understanding so there is a good chance that she could have died of prusic acid which is not far off of nitrates I know we talked about it being nitrates but um, so the problem is with the rain like I was talking about earlier is we need the rain very very bad but because we've been in a drought for so long when we do get the rain and we do get the regrowth we're gonna have some prusic acid come up in this Johnson grass and that's what I'm worried about a little bit of a double-edged sword yeah can't live with it can't yeah. live without it basically and so the problem is is we're gonna have to manage that so I've got some kind of things I need to talk to Marissa and Kevin about doing is um, we may have some options of letting a couple of animals in here and seeing how it goes and making sure they're okay, watching them closely, and then uh, transition the rest of the herd in here 
And what we may do with the Big Joe herd, because of the conditions, we may actually put the yearlings in here with them. I don't know that. I'm not, don't jump to conclusions here, but that is something that I may do uh, just because the pastures that they're in right now, one and two, when it rains, if there's Johnson grass in those pastures, when it regrows that fresh growth, if they come by and eat it, there's a good chance that they're going to consume that prusic acid, which could ultimately kill them. And we don't want to do that. So dang if you do, dang if you don't sort of situation. Um, but uh, so far, everybody I've talked to says if you've got a pasture that's had a lot of rest time and no regrowth, which is most of this 40 acres has not had any regrowth besides this little pet burn accidental burn we had right here and this johnson grass i just showed you they said you shouldn't have any problems so that's something we're going to lead into here in a week or so that is one of the things that we're going to lead you into once we wrap up this fence which i'm almost done with so this is all part of project 189 and moving the bison into more grass which is what we highly highly need and uh we're supposed to get some rain so got a lot going on at uh cross timbers bison ranch here at the ponderosa and uh i know i haven't talked about them lately but dunbar and them are doing great they're um all good kevin's been helping me take care of them and uh eleanor and and peaches all them are doing good so uh kevin's been having to put out hay and we still have the bunk feed with them right now um, and we're just keeping an eye on Johnson grass and stuff like that. But even though <laughs> there's nothing growing, so Ugh. the only thing that is growing, and to dispel a myth, maybe, is all these little pretty white flowers in the background that people in the comments kind of think might be poison hemlock. But you know, I've had a lot of people tell me that it, it's uh, poisonous, and, I, and I'm not a hundred percent sure on what this plant is. Here, we can we can take a little bit of it. We right can here. get a close up of it and show you that it is not hemlock, though. I, I've always been taught, but I'm pretty sure that this is what you call snow on a mountain. I could be wrong. Um, and I always thought it was poisonous, and some people told me it's not. But Johnson grass has kind of been the subject of the summer uh, here in Murray County. Because one of the things that uh, Johnson grass has done is I did hear a guy just a town away from us lost two bulls and like three cows or two cows and a calf so because they got into some fresh growth of johnson grass and that's he lost you know five or six animals like that uh, i'm just lucky i've lost one a lot of learning from all this for sure whenever you lose an animal thank you guys for watching us and uh we'll keep you updated on everything and let you know what we do as far as our practices with um, our management of these pastures and rotating and getting these animals on some fresh pasture. Thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you soon. Funny you say that. Quit stealing Elsa's food. That's what you get for getting in her feed, chickens. You got your feed over there. Yeah, they do have feed. That's the thing, is they have feed. They just choose to come and eat her dog food. Elsa wants their feed and they want hers. That's how the circle turns, I guess, I don't know.